My friends, good evening and welcome to our one shot? Um, question mark? <laughs> For the One Ring Second Edition, uh, we are playing Theft of the Moon uh, by Jacob Rogers. It is a first edition game that we are uh, trying to get through. Um, we have some very talkative, very playful players. Uh, my friends are, are some great role players, but they do like to, to flap their gums and talk a lot. So, uh, without much ado, let's go ahead to the village of Stonyford. Uh, in the in the East Anduin Vales of uh, Middle Earth, and and let's continue on with the game. Last week, there were you guys finished the other five challenges that were out there. There was the Stage of the Nobles and Thimble Rig, which you did uh, in the beginning. Stage of the Nobles. Uh, I would have to read it again. In fact, let me go ahead and and get over here. Um, so that I can remember Theft of the Moon, Seven Trials. Okay, so Stage of the Nobles was about producing ornate speech. You were supposed to give some kind of a speech, uh, and the audience judged each competitor to determine how well they did um, on civilized speech, elaborate euphemisms, etc. Okay, uh, Galvera. Uh, from, let's see, I would have to read that again. Uh, where did Galvira come from? Uh-huh, what she said. Uh, Galvira, um, it did not give me anything for her. I think, I think I told you she was just a, a Bayorning, uh, out of the village or at least the local area. Uh, Thimble Rig was the P test. Um, uh, under different sized thimbles, each turn a dried pea is put underneath the thimble and it's mixed around and you're supposed to spot it. Uh, Ethel the Unkind, uh, who is uh, a uh, Viglunding PC, and you'll find out about the Viglundings later, um, which basically is a, a branch off from the, the um, Woodman of Wilderland. Uh, she won that one, uh, but she has her name Ethel the Unkind because she tells the truth, like all the time, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. And then when we came back last week, uh, there was the torch race, which uh, Duota uh, managed to do quite well. Uh, Radigund unfortunately was disqualified in the in the um, by the time her second roll was made. Uh, because her torch went out, nobody else's torch went out, but uh, the you know the highest scoring uh, and the first across the finish line was Duota. Uh, okay, so I guess those are, all three of those happened on the first day. The torch race happened in the evening of the first day, uh, so that's my fault. The second day started out with the seeking field, um, which Radigund won because she found two moonstones and managed to score the highest uh, of, of everyone there, um, which was, was really great for, for her. Um, and the Seeking Field, of course, is where uh, they put out a whole bunch of little coins and rocks, and some of the rocks had little moons carved into them and stuff like that. And those little moon rocks um, uh, scored more than you know, standard rocks or or uh, uh, you know, shiny necklaces or beaded. Um, uh, there were all kinds of things that were out there that you could pick up. Basically, it was a yard full of junk. The hillbillies all got together and put a whole bunch of stuff out there, and everybody found it and brought it back. Um. <laughs> yeah, I found a, a, a manky old bridle in addition to two moonstones. Yeah. That's true. Uh, did anybody else find anything of of memory that they that they remember what you know what it was that was fun? No. Wow. Bio break. Bio. Oh. Oh. I see how it is. It's the. Uh, it's yeah. the. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, next was the Ancient Game, which Turing the Tinker won. Uh, the Ancient Game was about riddles and being able to be asked riddles out loud, but then each contestant, which was Turing the Tinker and Noreen, 
uh, had to give the answer back to the riddle uh, maker. Uh, and then the riddle maker, uh, you know, got the feedback from the audience and everything like that and judged who was, uh, who, who was going to make it. Unfortunately, Turing the Tinker came out on top with that one. Uh, there was Mean Shirak next, which uh, Ewald and Duota participated in. And Duota just blew everybody out of the water um, and entertained... Uh, like crazy, uh, the the most entertaining individual based on audience participation um, uh, was set to win that, and it turned out to be Duota in this case. Um, the Lay of the Moon, which is based on uh, poetry, prose, or songs that could be sung that have to do with the moon. Okay, whether it is the sickle of the moon. Or the moon in the sky, or you know, dropping your drawers type of moon, something like that. Um, whatever entertained the crowd the most uh, won, and in this particular instance, it was Noreen who who brought it down with his rhymes of lore. Uh, Luthwin attempted to get in there and scored just below Noreen. Okay, now are there any questions before I go into the presentation of the sickle? Uh, as the moon rises on the second night of the festival, all of the trials have been completed, and it is nearing time for the winner to be announced and the sickle to be presented. And um, the the thane comes up on stage, and he says, <coughs> "Good people of Stonyford." And Ava, who is more or less the village elder, is standing right next to him. He's the thane of the the general area, not the town itself. Um, and he says, uh, it is time to present the sickle of the moon. And uh, uh, Ava tries to, like, pull on his, on, on his uh, uh, right sleeve at the elbow to get his attention. But he's more of a grandstander. So he stands up there and he says, all of you who participated did a fine job. And... Uh, you are all to be congratulated, uh, and our crowd, and he opens his arms wide to signal to everybody, are to be congratulated as well for uh, for their participation in all of this. It made it really a fun time. Uh, and he says, Duota of Stony Ford, please come forward. Oh, uh, yay! <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Ava, uh, now, Duota, you're going to know Ava, as, like I said, as the leader of the village. If she is yanking on his sleeve, trying to get his attention, something is, is very important that's going on in the background. Um, because Ava is a tough cookie, okay? Her father is bedridden. He has been the leader of Stonyford for, um, well since before the Bayornings began to reconstitute, because this used to be a town of woodmen, um, but then after the Battle of the Five Armies, it began to to reconstitute as Bayornings. And pretty much every member of the town, including including you, um, decided to begin following Bayorn because uh, it was a, a better, more honorable lifestyle. Um, Bayorn has a habit of protecting his people no matter how far away they are from his house. Um, uh, and, and uh, you know, people uh, and men and women under the command of Bayorn have been protecting the borders of the Bayorning lands for several years now. Okay? Um, for, for, well, since the Battle of Five Armies five years ago. Uh, almost five years ago. So if if Ava is pulling on the Thane's sleeve, she really needs to get his attention. She's not joking around. She's not trying to be a pest. It's important. Okay. So do you do you walk up on the stage? Um. So I start approaching the stage. I'm probably feeling like really giddy at this point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, be with the general idea that I have won, but I am kind of prepared to share my moment with bad news because I know, you know, old auntie is definitely not the type that is shaken easily. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm just, like, slowly approaching the stage, practically buzzing with apprehension. Okay. Like, both good and bad. Okay, okay. Buzzing with, with joy and apprehension, so... Uh, you you keep moving forward, but uh, you know Ava finally yanks on his sleeve hard enough that he um, the Thane. Um, what was his name again? Forgive me, I should have this down, but it's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, do 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 do. do. Oh no, that's Torbold. That's not the Thane. I guess Ava is the Thane and Torbald is the Marshal. Uh, oh, I should have gone and read this all over again. Okay, Torbald and the Marshal. The Thane arrives. Okay, well, anyway. Um, so... We're going to say he's the Thane, not necessarily the Marshal. Um, the Marshal covers the entirety of the Mark, uh, which is still what, what they would call it because, well, language. And uh, uh, But Ava is, is the leader of the town. Uh, the Thane looks over at her, and his face is full of anger. And he says, as calmly as his voice will allow, Ava, what is going on? And she says... I apologize, Thane, but it appears the sickle has been stolen. To which the Thane's face drains absolutely white right at that moment. And he says, what? That cannot be possible. And she says, your tent has been ransacked. I was just informed about this by this man here, who turns out to be Wrathwolf. Okay? Um... Rathwolf kind of he's he's kind of a cheeky fella. He he has his hands uh, kind of folded in front of him, and he's kind of bent over like um, he has had a bad life, but he enjoys bearing bad news to others, something like that. Um, uh, but you do know this over the last two days. Um, when Rathwolf came into town to to be able to participate in some of these uh, trials, um, you know that he had not been seen in several years. Um, apparently, the tradition of the of the fall festival has been running longer than the sickle has been a part of it. Okay, but. Um, not for very long. Anyway, Rathwolf participated in one or two of the of the uh, previous festivals, but everything changed when the sickle was added to it, and he was not here when that happened. So this this uh, festival is basically brand new to him. Um, anyway, he's standing there. He's kind of hunched over a little bit, uh, and he's he's not really wringing his hands so much as he can't get his hands to stop moving. Okay. What do any of you think and or do? Uh, so I, I, I would like to know what he knows. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with Ross uh, since he spoke up first, and then I'm going to work my way up to figure out what you guys do. I've already failed for the evening, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, <laughs> so uh, you want to find out what Wrathwolf knows? Yeah, since he seems very agitated. Okay, um, well, actually, um, Ava signals for him to come up on stage. She she ushers him up on stage, and he, he does so even though you get the idea that he is acting like he's humble. Uh, his face does not appear real humble, but he's acting like he's humble. Okay. Uh, anyway, he steps up on stage and begins to speak. He's hiding something. I, almost, yeah. You would you would think that he's almost hiding something. Um, anyway, the Thane looks at him and says, "Speak up, man. What what do you know?" And uh, he kind of speaks too low for anyone to hear because he doesn't like it when anyone yells at him. So uh, I. I would hear him. 
No, uh, that's, that sound escapes my hearing. That's right. You do have uh, uh, quick of hearing. Um, and you hear what he says is that he found orc tracks leaving the Thane's tent. Orc? And the Thane is almost instantly, he's like, What? An orc in my tent? This far from the mountains and this far from the woods? And of course it's nightfall now, so it's mm -hmm. not beyond the, the the possibility of reason to believe. Um, so Ross, are you looking to try and Do and, I have my bed? <laughs> I'm like or, I'm like do you, my weapons. Do you have your what? Uh, I was wondering if I had my weapons. I I the, yeah, none of you have been asked to relieve yourself of weapons um, uh, today. Uh, you were offered the ability to store your weapons and your goods someplace that would be secure, and your weapons would likely not be necessary, but you weren't required to give them up at any point. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to step forward because the dwarves and the orcs have a love and story and history. And, yeah. And uh, I say... Take me to where you saw these tracks. Okay. Uh, where the signs on the orc were. Okay. My kin, my kin have centuries of hunting orcs. Okay. In the mountains and elsewhere. Okay. Let me um, kind of go through the list and find out what everybody's doing, and I will get back to that in a minute. Fair enough? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay, Remy. Uh, anything that you want to do? Yes, you should have a full pack of twenty arrows. All right. Just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, anything in particular you have in mind to do? Um, uh, would probably grab my bow, uh, have it in my hand, and I would walk to the stage. Like, could you show me uh, these tracks? Okay, it seems like uh, at least you two are trying to crowd up uh, on, on that stage. That's why I wanted to go through the list first to make certain of, of what everybody kind of wants to do. Luthwin. I would, of course, join my friend uh, Norlin uh, in trying to help find, uh, find the sickle of the moon and uh, slay these orcs. Okay, all right. Um, uh, let me... Get out my list here. I've got to make sure I keep this on top. Um, so let's see. Um, Duota, what about you? I'm, uh, the moment I hear that, I'm like, how dare they? <laughs> like, I'm especially pissed because I had won this for my family. So this is a very personal offense to me. And I am like... Uh, pretty much pacing around, like, point me in the right direction, point me in the right direction, I am going to kill. Okay. Um, all right, I've got that. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, and then Radigund, what do you think? I think I need to review the place again where it was kept and theft from to see if I can see those tracks or if I can identify... The route that the bur burglar took. In other words, it takes a thief to catch a thief? Question mark. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, pretty much all of you as adventurers are going up to the stage, right? No, I don't think it was stolen from the stage. They didn't say it was stolen from the stage. No, no, it was not. Um, but, uh, I, you know, you're not going to ask to check out the tent. You're just going to go? No, yeah, I'm asking. I don't want well, to... No, no, no. I'm. I, that, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to clarify with Ginger exactly what she's doing with Radigan. Mm -hmm. Well, I. I don't want too many people messing up. Say the crime scene. Okay, give me a. Uh, let me get in here and kind of look at things real quick. Uh, I need you to give me a test before I get back to. Uh, to Norin and the others that are kind of rushing the stage. 
Uh, let's see, Radigan. Yeah, I think I'm gonna scowl and slip out the back and take a look at where the, the scene of the crime. Okay. Um, let, uh, get back up there. Who told you you could go anywhere? Okay, go ahead and give me a stealth test. Um, no bonuses or penalties, just a regular stealth test. All right, hold on. Let me pull up my character. Stealth. It is favored. Yes. Oh, uh, oops. Well, then here's what I do. I, I, I run smack into uh, Lithwin, the elf. Oh, okay. And I grab her. Oh, my goodness. And I said, let's go check it out. <laughs> well, now, Luthwin is trying to, to stay close to Norin. So um, you kind of want to be careful with that one. Um, you don't have well, the ability to throw any hope at that. Let me let me take a look. Roll she a saw the guard sleeping the other night, so she knows it's probably just as safe as it. Well, yeah, you know, she, she probably knew, knows. She saw the state of the guards the same as I did the other night. Okay, let me ask you a question. Um, do you have a little sparkly hand toward the upper right of of that die roll in chat? Chat. Yeah. Yeah, go to chat, and then it's it says Rad Radigan the Silent across the top, and um, then uh, there should be on the far right, instead of a trash can, you should have a sparkly hand. Uh, it'll, it'll be a little hand in black. I don't even see a trash can, so no. It's not giving you the opportunity to uh, spend hope? No. No, no, do that. Huh. You have to either spend it before you roll. No, that's not the way it works. Uh, we're I'm playing in a in a first edition game right now, and the second edition system is based entirely off of the first edition. And uh, whenever you go to spend hope, uh, the little hope hand uh, comes up. Would you like to spend a point of hope? Uh, in order to, uh, do I even have that activated? Let me let me go in and, and look at my configuration because this is really weird. It should not. It should offer you the ability. Base target number of 18. Allow use of skills. Adversary. What about hope? Uh, active warn message. Show distance range. Extended weapons. Module settings. About face, compendium, folders, dice, so nice. FX master, perfect vision. Yeah, none of these things in here have an effect on that. Um, that's super odd, though. That It should allow you to, to spend some hope. Configure controls. Oh, jeez. Um, I don't even know where that would be. Uh, action name. Hope. Nope. It doesn't have anything in there for hope. Would you, since you're, since, uh, would you like to spend a point of hope to add an extra die? Ginger? Uh, how close was my failure? You're only off by two. All right, then. Uh, I want to get to the crime scene before every town yokel mucks it up so yeah okay so uh go ahead and uh i, I would say just put in the roll 1d6 um the forward slash r space 1d6 and see how that does because that should give you enough points and then you can delete the point of hope uh from the large box on your character sheet where the hope is Okay, um, so that adds five. That makes it 15. You can get a basic success out of it, which is pretty much all you need because almost everyone, in fact, I'm going to say everyone, is focused on uh, Ava, uh, the Thane, 
and, uh, and not so much Duota because she didn't really make it to the stage just yet. So, um, but they're all in shock. Where, where is it? Where's the sickle? And using their confusion, you manage to slip away to the Thane's tent. Now, I'm going to come back to you in a few minutes. Okay, um, kind of figure out what it is you're you want to see, uh, what you're looking for in specific, so that I can make up die rolls. Now, Noreen, um, you and uh, Yuld uh, approach the stage. Both of you uh, basically say the the same thing. You know, where are they? You know, what's going on? Um, so the Thane actually looks at you Noreen and he is he's he's still very annoyed but the look of annoyance on his face is deeper than just um uh he wants the show he wants the spotlight and you're basically taking it from him because folks are now talk uh, are uh, you know um looking more at you than they are at him Okay, so yeah, well, he's he failed at being the thing, <laughs> catching the item. So you're not it's wrong. Time, it's time for us to retrieve it. And okay, I, and my people know the orcs. Other than the elves, which are older than us, my my bit, um, we know the orcs best. Okay, we've been fighting them since they. In oh yeah, yeah, long, long time ago, um, hundreds of years. Now, um, the question that I have for you, oh, I keep popping that open. Sorry, guys. Um, the question that I have for you is this. Um, do what? I'm sorry. I also have a good scan skill, so I want to look for tracks and stuff. Okay, so when you old uh, 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 steps up with you and basically says, you know, where are the tracks? Where are they going to? Um, you're along with him, but uh, Ross, you're okay with uh, with going uh, Yule's direction? Well, yeah, I wanted to go look at where the what's his name saw that one. Okay, um, yeah, so, so Rathwolf, um, yeah. looks at Ava for just a second, kind of for her permission to leave, which really pisses off the Thane, and, and she nods at him, and he goes, not really running off, but stepping off quickly towards the area where, where those are, um, which is to the north, uh, the north edge of of Stonyford, not really the Thane's tent. Now, um, let's see. Let me let me get back through this. So let's see. That was Noreen and uh, um, so Luthwin, you're basically sticking with Noreen and Yuld, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Duota, you're you're pretty unhappy. Uh, at the the theft of the sickle, and I I understand that, but is it just the theft of the sickle, or is it more? This is your time for some glory, um, based on uh, on Duota's kind of uh, demeanor. Well, I mean, the reason why Duota participated in this competition is in the first place was to win it for my family mm -hmm. like half of my family is farmers and the other half is i believe guardsmen mm -hmm. so like that would have been really really important to my family and i was kind of proud of myself for being able to live up to the you know the life that they helped me make for myself mm -hmm. and so this is just really a low blow in my book Okay, so you're you're pissed off more about that than than the the uh, theft of glory. So that's that's a yeah. good thing. Okay, Radigand, I I want to work with you for a minute. Um, you're going to have probably probably a good thirty seconds to a full minute to to look for things. So you rush to the Thane's tent and. The, there are two Bayornings uh, who were in that tent 
uh, that uh, one of them is actually dead with an arrow uh, in the in its back in his back, and then the other one is laying on the ground, having been uh, hit in the head with something, uh, and he he is bleeding from that spot. What do you want to look for? Uh, tracks, I suppose. Um, or did they, um, uh, the, the sickle, could it be stashed under a table or anything like that, a hidden? Okay, in the uh, room? go ahead. Don't worry. Go ahead and, and give me a scan roll. Sure. How would I steal the sickle if, if I could? Okay, um, well, um... Think about it for a second. What would be your particular motivate? What would be Radigan's particular motivation? Is the sickle enough? Um, ooh, very nice. Uh, is the sickle enough of a motivation, or did you have? Is the sickle kind of a side project? You know, you would have to think of that. Um, Uh, no, uh, it, it was worth stealing, I suppose. Uh, uh -huh. It is an object of value, and it looks like these two fellows have been killed for it. Well, no, one one was killed. The other one's still alive. He's just been knocked on the head. But he he is he is not going to wake up before uh, before everyone else has a chance to kind of get there. And you can hear the sounds of the encroaching crowd as it is, but you've got a little bit of time. You know you've got a little bit of time. So right. let's deal with that part first. Uh, so let's see. Seventeen is a really nice success. You said you're looking for tracks. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay, we're we're going to get all CSI for a minute. Um there are tracks that went into the tent. Um from what you can tell based on that roll, they are the tracks of a small swift orc. A small swift what? Orc. All right. I have enough, like, uh... Or maybe even a goblin. Yeah, I have enough Mirkwood lore to distinguish those tracks, I would think. Okay, yes. Mirkwood lore would help you with that. Um, let's see. What else might Mirkwood lore help you with? Um, okay, Mirkwood lore is... <sighs> what other lores do you have? Any? Oh, wrong way. Well, I have leechcraft. I could probably assist the the guy that is uh, bleeding. Well, but leechcraft is something that's going to take hours and hours to do. Yeah. Um, because you've got to apply the leeches to the proper area, and then you've got to let them bleed off uh, uh, any sickness or illness or or nastiness that's uh, in there. Let's see. Um, here's what I'd like you to do. Roll stealth plus one. You've got burglary. Uh, plus one dice or plus one. Apparent, uh, apparently the thunder. yeah. Apparently the game system only allows for bonuses to dice, not not uh, individual bonuses. So and I don't know why that just doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, let me get over here. Things are running slow on my computer again tonight, and it's my computer. It's not anything else. Ooh, great success. Okay. Um, all right. I am going to go over to the sidebar, and I, I would like for you to join me there. Okay. Um, you're thinking... The um, the sickle may have been taken for its supposed magical value, okay? But it had to be removed from the purview of the families in Stonyford. Any questions? 
Uh, it, it, it's a magical weapon. No. So it's not a weapon. It, it's a It's a farming implement. All right, but what would what good would removing it from the families do? It could be used someplace else if it is indeed a a, a sort of a magic tool. All right, so like the goblins or the the orcs. Am I sure it's a goblin or an orc? Uh, you you can't really be sure because if it, it could either be a small orc or a goblin. All right, they want it to they they want a farm implement. Maybe. Or they just want it for its magic. Maybe. Huh. You can't really tell for sure based on the information that you presently have. True, but I see where where which way did the uh small folk go? Um well, that's a matter of of another story. Do you want to break off your your investigation um, to in order to uh, find out about the tracks? Uh, will the tracks be obscured by all the village people? Um, they could be. They could be quick. They could be quite quickly. So if you want to break off and go help with that, that's fine. Uh, you mean they'll send someone to follow the tracks themselves? You know that the the townsfolk are approaching. You don't know if they're coming to the Thane's tent. You don't know if they're going after the tracks. But you do remember hearing um, Ewald uh, asking loudly about going to find tracks all right all right so I'll, I'll 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 continue my investigation here in the tent okay so what would you what what would you like to do next let's say you've got between one and two rolls left before the the townsfolk and your adventurer friends arrive well They didn't just stash it and and cover it up anywhere. It's not still in the tent, is it? Uh, go ahead and make a scan uh, roll, another scan roll. In the hopes that they could hide it and come back later. Perhaps. That That's not a bad line of reasoning. However, go ahead and give me a, a scan roll. Um, ooh, oh, wow, look at that. Both of those were Gandalf's runes. Very nice indeed. Okay, those are automatic successes. Um, in the short amount of time that you have left, uh, and I want you to add a, a skill point to your character sheet. Um, I will be uh, you know, putting in uh, adventure points and skill points uh, towards the end of this so that you guys can find out how the system works. But uh, for now... Um, you take a very quick look around. Uh, you move the, the two bodies that are on the floor. Uh, you look underneath the table and underneath the benches. You look underneath um, any and behind anything that is, is an evident place that things could be hidden, and you find nothing. So I don't think it's been stashed. On a body or on, uh, say, a pocket in the tent, or they didn't drop it on the ground and cover it with dirt or anything like that. Correct. Now, as your role was good enough that I'm, I'm going to give you this. As you're leaving the tent, and, and I'm not saying you're done yet, but I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. As you're leaving the tent... You notice you 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 are able to kind of set foot tracks based on size and depth of print to the bodies that are on the floor, and you are able to determine that this may have been a a goblin or a small orc that was leaving the tent, but there is another set of footprints that are relatively fresh 
probably in the last few minutes. In fact, dust is still falling from them um, uh, that do not appear to belong to anybody. Uh, you you have you know the Thane's uh, general size. He's a fairly good sized fella, even though he's a farmer. Um, uh, and you can tell by the way his feet were planted um, what kind of what his tracks look like now we're not talking about you know big old jack boots with modern day prints or anything like that but we're also not talking about moccasins okay um there are actual shoe styles and cuts and everything like that that the various people have for the most part people make their own shoes out here so um, you kind of get that figured out real quick. That was such a wonderful roll. Uh, that's why I gave you the skill point and all of the information. Now, before we go up, again, do you have anything else you want to try and look for? Uh, just where are those uh, tracks, those other tracks leading? Aha. Um, I, they basically lead west and north similar to the tracks of um uh the the uh the orc all right so they might have been in cahoots you don't know all right so but i have two sets of tracks to look out for i memorize it best i can what the tracks and shoes look like. Okay. Those sets. Okay. Uh, are you ready to go back up to the other channel then? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll let you move yourself and I'm going to move myself. There, there they are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ginger will be up in just a moment. Um, and if she's not up in just a moment, I'll go back down and see what's going on. Um, but there she is. Um, all of you come kind of to the north, uh, the north, uh, northwestern, or uh, you know, northwestern side where the Thane's tent is. But uh, uh, Yuld and Noreen, and, and Ross says that he'll be back in a, in a minute. Um, but uh, um, Yuld and Noreen and Luthwin with Noreen uh, kind of, you know, go out a bit further. When you get to that area, you see Radigand looking at tracks on the ground. Okay, already. Um, I would like to wait a minute for Ross to come back. I'm going to presume he went to uh, went to bio. So, um, I, you know, while he's gone, any questions any of you would like to ask about, well, anything in this particular season, uh, uh, scene? Da -da -da. Hmm. Wait, so was it ever established that I was going over there yet? Um, I kind of figured since you were angry about, uh, uh, the, the sickle being stolen and it was important to you that you would kind of go with the townsfolk. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I would kind of be going with the townsfolk. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Um, now, um, okay. Ross put a note, uh, for hope bonus in the general channel. Uh, and I think it comes uh, directly from the book. Um, so if you guys want to read that real quick, you you can you can do so. Um, just bear in mind if you spend a point of hope on a fellowship focus, and I don't know if you guys have your fellowship focuses or not yet. I think one or two of you do. Um, uh, but if you spend a uh, a hope point on a fellowship focus, it actually gives them two dice to roll with instead of one and i'm gonna have to find out what's going on with the uh with the fellowship uh or the uh, hope dice thing i think you're just supposed to kind of roll it um let me look at something while ross is gone 
Who's playing Ewald? That would be me. I know you. You and I know each other through uh, Jarnor. And I know Duoda. So there is some familiarity there. No, no questions asked. Right. Um. Let's see how in the you world. Got, you guys know that uh, I know the ways of the forest. <laughs> Say that more slowly, or else it could be taken wrong. <laughs> the ways of the forest. Yeah, the ways of the force. Oh, the force. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you. Yeah. Um, okay. I got to figure out what's going on with the the hope thing. Um, I just updated this the other day, and I thought all of the hope uh, uh, hands were there, but they're not showing up. So we're gonna have to play with the with the tabletop rules. Uh, if you guys want to spend hope, uh, I'll either ask you or you can. Tell me. I would like to spend a point of hope on that. Just remember, you don't want to go too low on hope because if you get um, uh, too many shadow points, it can really hurt you. So, right. Basically, when your shadow points and your hope change places, you become miserable, and that's not a good place to be. All right. So as the game comes close, I'm probably going to see if I can't. Say, uh, slow anybody and their dog from coming into the uh, tent. Um, I'll ask for a healer. Is anyone here a healer? You know, like blocking the way. <laughs> <laughs>